<clears throat> okay, so now back to a warm up. We should be good. Okay, you guys, so everyone can see the warm up. Um, what I'm going to have you guys do is graphing is really important, and we're really kind of leading into that just being able to graph and being able to graph some word problems and things like that. So we're going to do a little more practice with graphing. So I know you guys can see the warm up. It says graph the equation. So what I want you guys to do, and there's, and there's multiple work areas, but we can't all do it at the same time. So actually, um, Donnell, can you take that top one? And Dustin, you start off taking that bottom one. And the way you guys are going to do that is you can draw little circles. So if you go up to the square function um, on that little grid, you can click on that and they'll show you a drop down menu of, and I'll kind of show you, of shapes. So if you click on that, oops, can't work on my computer very well, you can see there's an ellipse and a line tool. So what you do is take the ellipse tool and you would draw two circles on your graph. Did I do that? Probably. I'm going to get rid of that. And um, anyway, so draw two circles on your graph and then use the line tool to connect those circles. So what I want you to try to do is graph that e first equation, y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 6. So Donnell and Dustin, you guys are going to try to graph that and everybody else just kind of think about where you're first point would go and your second point would go. You can also choose to use the pencil tool to do that. So, Donnell, can you hear me? Raise your hand or, or type yes. Donnell, are you still there? Okay, so if Donnell, if you're not here, I'm going to assume you're not in our group anymore if you're not raising your hand or typing yes. Dustin, are you here? Oh, yeah. Okay, so Dustin, if you are started, that's great. Um, okay, Janae, do you want to try the top one then? All right, Dustin, you're doing the bottom one, so I know you can figure it out. I've seen you in action. So see if you can use, you can either use the pencil tool if you want. It's just I'm not very good with the pencil tool drawing straight lines. Or you can use, like I said, if you click on that square, there's a drop down and you can get the ellipse tool out and you can, you know, click and hold and make circles on there. So Dustin, just do your best. Try to graph that first equation. And then Janae, see if you can graph that. Oh, the second one? Well, no, you, you guys are both graphing the first equation just in two different graphs. So... Ah, uh, Donnell, so you're back. Okay. I went ahead and gave your graph to Janae, though. You don't want to do it? <laughs> you going to wait? Okay. Okay. All right. So then, Donnell, if you're back, so that's good you're back. So, Dustin, I don't see any circles on your graph yet. Um, Donnell, why don't you go ahead and take that first graph again, then? Okay. Oh, let me... Uh, so Donnell, take that first graph. Ah, you don't know how to do it. Okay, Dustin, how about you then? Do you know how to graph that equation? Okay, Dustin, are you still there? Because I don't. Oh, there we go. Perfect. You've got a circle on there. That's what I like. A little circle. Okay, well, I'm going to see who's next on my list then. Donnell, you're not sure. So we're going to come back to you. So pay close attention. Um, what do you guys want to try? Keone, you want to give it a try? You did a really good job on the ones you did. Um, you do use that top, or actually somebody's using that top graph. Maybe I don't know. I'm not using it. You are? I said I'm not. I'm trying oh. to erase my phone. Oh, it's okay. So actually, Kenny, yeah, use that top graph, and you're just gonna graph equation number one, where that's y equals negative one fourth x plus six. Yes. Yes. Very good. 
and it's really hard. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to give that top graph to um, Kiona, actually. So I'm going to erase. There we go. All right, so don't worry about those little marks in there, Kiona. Try your best. And it does take a little bit of time to try to get used to drawing in those graphs. But Dustin, you're going to need more than one point, I have to tell you, on your bottom graph. So give it a try. So Dustin, give me a little chat. What's going on in your head? How come you only have one point? Are you not, not certain? <laughs> You're what? It did? Oh, there it came back. It doesn't. It just um, it stalls a little bit. Okay. Do you, do you know how to use the line tool? Or the little circle tool? I'm Does, thinking as of now. I'm thinking as of now. Ah, Dustin. Okay, how about this, you guys? Everybody in the class right now, all of you guys? Oh, very good. Kiona's making a good effort here. It looks looking pretty good. Very close, very close. So everybody in the class right now, anyone who knows how to graph y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 6, raise their hand. <laughs> yeah, if you know how to graph negative 1 fourth x plus 6, raise your hand. So Donnell, I know you're confused a little bit. Dustin, you're thinking. Janae, what do you think? Leda thinks yes. Serena, how about you? I done the graph, but I haven't done it this way. That way. The X and the mm -hmm. R. Okay, Serena, you're confused too. Okay, so you guys, one thing about this too. Oh, let me start the webcam. Oh, I forgot about the webcam. You guys should tell me. Oh, well, but I just, it's just oh, no, I just forgot it. Give me a second, guys. That way I can, you know, be more serious. You guys see me. All right, let's go back. Um, okay, you guys, so anyway, one thing about this um, is that this is later. So if you aren't, you know, in right now we are in week five in the material. And um, we do have a mid-unit exam this week, but again, I don't want you to attempt it if you don't feel confident with the material, okay? And so I want you to feel confident graphing, and if you're not far along, you may not have graphed yet. So you guys may not have graphed yet. So what does the R stand for? Um, which R are you thinking? On the second question. Oh, don't worry about the second question yet. Do you see an R in the second question? Yeah. Or are you thinking X? No, there's an R right here. Oh, that's yeah, and that's just that's okay. <laughs> kind of looks like an R. Did you I'm have a question? Oh, your graph. You know, that's an awesome attempt. You are almost perfect. No, actually, well, yes, but you're just that's actually good. Leave it. You're totally fine. Totally fine. So we're gonna actually, and then Dustin, you're making a good effort too. Oh, we have some scribbles on there now. Okay, I'm going to delete the scribbles. Okay, so Dustin, you're making a good effort as well, and we're going to talk about that. Is there anybody then? I know Lita said that she thinks she might know how to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward to the next graph. So Lita, do you want to go ahead and try to graph in this top graph? So see if you can graph number one in the top graph. Give it a try. And it's kind of, like I said, it's a little bit tricky using the tools, but um, the easiest thing is to, oops, Oh, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move you forward to the next one. Um, so the easiest thing is to use that square and then click on that down arrow and, and pull off the ellipse tool. Click on that and then use your ellipse tool to make your dots. And then there's a line tool that you can use to connect the dots, um, unless you want to try the pencil. But you saw what a couple other people tried to do with the pencil, and it wasn't very pretty. Um, so give that a try. <clears throat> is there anybody else that wants to try it? Say a chat now or forever. Hold your peace. <laughs> no? All right, we're going to let Leah try it then. So while she's trying it, you guys, um, again, just make sure you're keeping caught up if you can. Um, if you have any problems, make sure that you are messaging me or emailing me. Um, we do have weekly work. This week, 
this week five right now is a little bit lighter because you guys have a mid-unit exam. So there's not as much um, going on this week. But there is a review that was posted last week. So if you guys didn't get it yet, just make sure that you, you know, download it. Um, I posted the answers this week for that review. So if you um, have downloaded it and you've tried it, you know, compare your answers, give yourselves feedback, and that way you can come talk to me and say, I don't get this one, Mrs. Elliot. How do we do this? Um, and that will be really important um, because that review is going to look like your mid-unit exam. And so if you can do that, you'll ace it. You'll, you'll do great. Okay. But the exam is posted. So like I said, if you're ready, you know, take it, but you can only take it once. Um, so don't just take it until you feel like pr you're pretty good with taking it. And then if you do do horribly on it, we'll talk. We'll do some intervention lessons, some things like that. And then you'll have an opportunity to, to do a mastery assignment to show me that you can be proficient. But, um, but really make sure you're ready to go, you guys, before you first do it. Okay, so it looks like Leda's got a little graph going. And I can see that she is almost exactly correct, too. Um, okay, Serena, hurry back if you can. Yeah, Leda, that's... That line you got going there is is, um, is a little bit curvy. Okay, you guys. So what I'm going to do is, um, so later, are you finished? Or did the line just jump out? Oh, you didn't do that. Ah, somebody else did it. Yes, that is the problem. See, when I give you guys all the rights, then uh, everybody wants to do things. But they don't want to actually graph the problem here. I'll delete your line for you later there. Um, anyway, so let's just go with what you guys have and let's examine what you did, okay? So this is going to be important. Like I said, the graphing doesn't go away. So let's actually go back to uh, Kiona's right here first. Now, if we look at this equation, it says negative 1 fourth x plus 6. Well, if you guys know from doing all the patterns, the 1 fourth, the negative 1 fourth, that's your change per every pattern, right? That's your growth rate or your decline, whatever. Um, but that's, that's what changes every time. That's your slope, it's called. And the plus 6 on the end, that's your starting point. Ah, uh, yes. And so, um, Kiana was just saying, she did 6 going down, but should you go down or should it be up? The plus 6 on the end. Up. So that was the, that, that was a minor thing. You did a really great job because Kiona knew that that 6 was on the y-axis. And so, yes, Donnell, exactly right. Y equals mx plus b. Um, that 6 actually does go on the y-axis. The only thing is, guys, is that it actually goes on the positive side just because it is a positive 6. So look over here, you guys. I'm going to draw on mine, and I'm going to show you where that 6 goes. So, Kiona, good job. You had it in the right place. It actually, though, goes up here. Um, so you knew to put it on the y-axis. That was excellent. And then I was going to actually look, Dustin, you had your, I think you were the same, weren't you? Um, can't find yours anymore. Maybe you erased it. Oh, you're typing to me. Yep, you erased it. You should have left it. You know what? You were just, you were very close too. Okay, so we know that the um, y-intercept is up on the 6, right? Now let's look at the slope. The slope is 1 over 4. Remember that your slope is your rise over your run. So, the 1 is your rise, and the 4 is your run. So I'm going to write this here so you guys can remember. So it's rise, and m is always your slope, like Donnell said, m, y equals mx plus b. So it's rise over run. And that is this negative 1 fourth. Okay. So rise over run means we go up 1 over 4, which is exactly what Kiona did on here. She went up 1 and over 4. So the only thing, I made this a little bit tricky. Oh, yep, I know, Lita, very good. You can't forget it's negative. And I made it a little bit tricky because, like Lita said, there's a negative in front of the 1 fourth. And I think, Lita, did you have that? And actually, Lita, you did a really good job of making your graph negative. So you totally got the slope right. Um, it's just your starting point. I think that is off a little bit there because it, it doesn't go through the 6. So if we go back and look, um, you, both of you guys all had the slope correct because Kiona went up 1 and over 4 and Leda went down 1 and over 4. So you guys got the 1 fourth, but just, yeah, be careful of the direction. So in this case, since it's negative, 
our line has to slope down from left to right. So you go down one, over one, two, three, four, and I'm going to make another point here. Okay. And then now I'm ready. I have my two dots. I can draw my line between my dots, just like this. And I will have graphed my equation. Okay, so you guys good try. Those of you guys that tried, um, oh, you mixed it up, Leda? Well, you had the slope right, and you had a negative slope. You just didn't um, start from the plus 6, it looks like. So very nice job, you guys. Good effort. Good effort. All right. Anybody have any questions about graphing? Okay, Janae has a quick question, so we're going to hold. You guys think about that. Um, the which one are you thinking? Um, one and four. Oh, the one over four is your slope. So what we did was that we used the one and the four. Mm -hmm. So we went, we took that one and that was our rise. So we, you can go down or up, that's considered rise. Yeah. So we went um, down one, and then the four is our run, and so we counted and we went over four. One, two, three, four. And just notice that the direction of the slope is negative. So that's kind of the key thing here with this slope is that it has to be a negative slope. So if you'll notice in our example, and I'll write it on here, we go in the downward direction. We're decreasing from left to right. And so that's how we know we have a negative slope. Okay. All right, you guys. So let's look at this <clears throat> second expression. And I know that you guys did these in Khan Academy, and these are going to be on your um, exam too. So I just wanted to make sure that um, you guys are comfortable with order of operations on this too. So I'm going to move this actually out of the way. Uh, maybe not. So I don't know what x is. And x is 2. There we go. So now our graph is... Let's do this. I'm going to put these together and move them up a little bit. Start with this dot, which eventually will go. Okay, so when x is 2, what you need to do then, and I think you guys have been pretty good with this, what I've seen in the lab, is you need to substitute in the 2 every time there's an x. And just to help you guys, and we've talked about this before, is, you know, Keep it organized. So write what you see. So we have, starting off, we have a 3. And then we plug in the 2 for x. So I'm plugging in that 2. And it's squared. Minus 8. Plug in the 2. Okay, plus 6. <clears throat> so I didn't evaluate anything at this point. I just substituted the 2 in. Okay, so are you guys all good with that? How we did that? Okay. So if we think about our PEM dots. And I know, Shauna, we just did PEMDAS this morning. So see, it's all going to be fresh. And you can remember it by, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And we talked about that before, too. So we look at our parentheses. Well, we don't really have anything going on in the parentheses, just a single number, so we don't have to worry about that. Exponents, oh, yes, we do have some exponents. So we do need to worry about that. Well, we have 2 squared, which just means 2. We have two twos, so 2 times 2 is 4. So we solved that. And notice, you guys, I'm just writing everything else the same. I'm not doing anything to it. So I'm not skipping any steps so I won't make a mistake. I just wrote everything else the same. Okay, so the next thing that you guys are going to do is your multiplication and division. And those happen at the same time from left to right. So if I go to the left, I have 3 times 4. That's 12. I don't do my minus yet. Okay, so I'm going to leave the minus there. But I do have 8 times 2. So I have to do my multiplication. I'm not doing any addition subtraction yet, so I'm going to leave the plus 6. So do you guys see how I do that one step at a time? If you try to skip around and all that, did you already do that? Oh, nice job, Kiana. So hopefully, yeah, if you guys did this on your own, you're comparing very good and seeing how close you are. Okay, so now we're on to the final step, our addition and our subtraction. Again, those happen at the same time from left to right. So I will go 12 minus 16 Okay, so 12 minus 16. I have a big number I'm subtracting. Good, did you say negative? Awesome, awesome. Negative 4. 
Good. So 12 minus 16 is a negative 4. And then I'm writing my plus 6. And then you're exactly right. I get 2. So now I have one subtraction, one addition. That means I subtract and take the sign of the bigger number, which is just 2. Yay. All right, Randy. So, Randy, you're typing. You have a question, I'm assuming. And you guys are going to get some... Um, you know, within your weeks, you should have some practice on this if you haven't already practiced. And that, like I said, on the week two, I know Khan Academy, there's a whole practice session on this. And if you need to go back and do some of these, that's great. Because what we are going to be moving on to is actually solving. So we are going to have an equal sign in there, and we're going to be solving, which is a little bit different. Okay, so I just want to make sure you guys are pretty comfortable with this. And the easiest way to do that is to do it like I did, and just take your time in writing each step out. And try not to skip any steps. Um, that way you won't make any mistakes. All right, so anybody else have any questions? Oh, you can't hear me? Your computer is glitchy. Sometimes it's easier to go into the lab for the um, webinars because of that, so I'm going to type Randy a quick note about that. Um, so sometimes it is here to go to the, to watch the webinars. Um, Alright you guys, we're going to actually um, get started. Okay, so moving on. Here we go. Maybe. So what I want to do today, you guys, our objectives is we are going to build equations from context and we are going to review for the mid-unit exam. So I just have a couple of key problems that I want to go over that I know give people trouble, um, but that way you have those notes and if you haven't gotten to the practice, you can get to the practice um, and you can do that. Okay, so hopefully everyone, uh, oh yeah, and you can also watch the recording later too. All right, so that's what we're planning to do today. So let's get started. Okay, so I put about four examples here, two simple ones and then one a little bit more complex. And we have a whole lesson in practice on this um, from last week. So I just want to go over this though because this always gives people a lot of trouble. Can we take these notes? You can take, uh-huh, you want to take notes? Yeah, you can take notes and that's going to be recorded too. So Janae, you can also... Um, yeah, take them if you want. Um, it's just a lot to write down, so you may want to just take some and then go back and look at the recording. <laughs> but we'll spend a while on it, so if you want to write some of these down, that would be good. Okay. Sean, do you want to write anything down? You can go on YouTube. Yeah. You're good? Okay. And that's fine. It's sometimes it's easier just to listen and then go back later, but the key thing with these, you guys, is um, anytime we're building equations, we are building them to look like this, really. Y equals mx plus b, as Donnell said earlier. And you may not always have a b term, okay? But when you're building equations, we're always going to have the y and x. Those are our variables. And then we're always going to try to find something that goes in for the m and maybe something that goes in for the b, okay? So example one, Tanya has been training and can now run 8 miles per hour. So I'm giving you guys some variables. Let D represent the total distance and H represent hours. So what I'm saying is that, hey, you may not need to use X and Y always. You can use different numbers or different uh, letters to represent those variables. And that can help you when you're doing a word problem because then you know what you're talking about. So D is going to be our total distance and H is going to represent our hours. So if we're writing this out, it's as simple as this. So D is going to be like Y, which is our total. So D is equal to, now in this case, can anybody tell me um, what the M should be if Tanya runs 8 miles per hour? 8? Good. Very good. The 8. She runs 8 miles, and then we said H is going to represent hours, so we put the H in place of the X. Do we have anything that we would plug in for B? So Donnell said no. So no oh, is, no. yeah, no. No? Did you say no? <laughs> Donnell said no. Did you say no to Kiana? 
Very good. Very good. We actually do not have anything that we would plug in for our B in this case because that would be like a starting amount. So if we said that she was um, starting with a, at a distance of you know 50 miles and we want to figure out her total distance, then we would plug the 50 in there. But we're just coming up with a really simple equation. So this is the same thing. D is the same thing as Y in this equation. And Y is always your total. And H is the same thing as X in this equation. And X is going to be the unit, like per hour or per minute. Okay, so let's look at example two. Um, in example two, a 9-volt battery loses its charge over time at a rate of 0.2 volts per month. And actually, that's true. A 9-volt battery does lose its charge over time. I don't know if that's exactly correct, but um, if you keep a 9-volt battery in your drawer for a long time, eventually it'll lose its charge and it won't work. It's kind of crazy. So let C represent the total charge and M represent our months. All right, so if I'm going to write my equation, C represents our total charge, right? Okay, so what am I going to put next? Which one? So think about what always goes in place of the M is the amount that I'm changing by. Point 0.2. So yeah, so Dustin, the 9 volts is just, um, that's the um, initial starting point of the battery, right? So 9 volts isn't what it changes by each time. It's the point 0.2. So this guy's over here. Nice. So point 0.2 times m, so it loses 0.2 volts per month. And then what do we start with? Nine, good. So we're this case, we do have a b, right? We're starting with nine volts. OK, now there's one problem with this equation. Am I losing two volts per month with this equation, or am I gaining two volts per month? Gaining, exactly. So what do I need to do to this equation to show that I'm actually decreasing 0.2 volts? Negative. Oh. Yes, Negative. yes, yes. All right, Justin, I, I know you're probably typing that in. It takes longer to type than talk, I know. OK, so this would be our actual equation. We're losing 2 volts per month, and we're starting at 9. All right, so you guys, hopefully we're starting to get the hang of it. So let's look at example 3. Yes, that's a very good negative. <clears throat> so at sea level, the air that surrounds us and presses down on us is 14.7 pounds per square inch. So did you guys know that? There's actually like pressure on you, right? And then if you notice that when you dive into a pool or you were to dive down into the ocean, the pressure will increase, right? That's why subs will collapse if they go too deep. Did you know that? And they'll collapse. If they, go, if they, if they you know, something happens to them and they go down and they're, and they're really deep, the sub will just collapse and so much pressure and it'll get really small and yeah, that's bad. What is what? Oh, submarine. Oh, a submarine. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you are in a submarine and something happens to the submarine and say you're in a really deep part of the ocean and it starts sinking. Um, yes, maybe that's probably what happened. <laughs> like the Titanic. If you go deep enough, the pressure is so great it'll actually compact the sub and smush it down really small because it's so much pressure pushing down on it. And you would, yeah, you would. Hopefully you would get out by then and no one will die. The sub will just collapse, just eject. <laughs> uh, well, the submarine driver wouldn't actually take the sub that deep. There would have to be an accident or something like that. Yeah, like in the war when they, you know, were you know a lot each other. <laughs> oh, yeah, because the pressure starts... Yeah, and if you hold your breath, that's bad because then the air expands. There's different different things that can go on when you're diving. But yeah, if you go too deep, too much pressure. And but think about you know your ears pop because of the change in pressure when you go down too. Oh yeah, you you can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't normally go down quite that far, you guys. You, we're all safe. But if we look at this problem. So the pressure is going to increase by 1.5 pounds per square inch for every meter you go down. So every time you go down a meter, that's how much the pressure is going to increase. So again, if we let P represent um, that, um, Lita, what are you saying? That CN collapse as well? CN. Um, so the P is equal to, 
All right, you guys, so what's going to go next to our x, basically? 1.5, exactly. Oh, the can collapses as well, yes. I know, if you put a can down that far. So you're right, you guys, the 1.5 is our change, and that goes next to the x. Okay, so what's our starting amount then? Because that always goes with the b. 14.7. So if, um, if I did this perfectly, I would have actually changed the x, right? Because I said in my problem that I want m to represent um, meters. So it should actually be, sorry, I was just going along with the x. And I wouldn't mark you guys wrong if you put an x there, but since we're going along with the problem, total pressure is equal to 1.5 times how many meters you go down, plus the 14.7. Okay. But I thought you said it always went down, but it went down. I, um, it does. Okay. So um, the m in this case is actually the 1.5, okay. and the x is now m because I just said call that meters. Oh. Yeah, so I'm just, you know. So one thing you guys can, can know about these problems is you don't always have to use x and y. This is kind of excellent. All right, last one. So, and this is true too, so as you start off climbing the mountain, you may be at the bottom of the mountain, and it may be 70 degrees, and then as you go up, the temperature actually goes down. Um, and it goes down 0 .003 degrees per foot, or usually what people say is 3 degrees per thousand feet. So like if you're climbing Mount Everest and you get up to the top, it's, you know, negative 40 degrees below zero, it's freezing, freezing, but when you're way down in the, in the towns before you start climbing, it could be 80 degrees, you know, so it, it just changes a lot. Mount Everest is 30,000 feet high almost, which is very, very tall. Okay, so again, T is going to represent our total. So remember that your total is always your Y. So the total is equal to, okay, so what is the amount we would put in for M? Very good. So negative, very good. It is decreasing, so it is going down negative 0.003 degrees per foot and we're gonna so instead of X I'm gonna put an F to represent my feet and what's our starting amount on this particular mountain good job no you're exactly right Janae 70 degrees very good excellent all right you guys does that make sense so you started at 70 degrees and every foot that you go up the temperature is going to drop 0 0.003 degrees and you're going to, you know, if you climb in a mountain, you're going to climb 4,000 feet probably around here or something, you know. Those 14ers might start at 10,000 feet. And then go up. So the temperature could be 12 degrees cooler, plus wind. It could be freezing. <laughs> okay, any questions on the word problems? 3,000. Oh, yeah, 3,000? 3,000 feet. So have any of you guys um, ever hiked a 14er? in Colorado before? You can raise your hand if you have. Lady, you have? Awesome. Somewhere around? There's some big mountains around here, so Lita has. Very good, very good. Well, it takes a little while to get to them, and then it takes a while to hike them, and you have to start really early because then the lightning comes in, and you don't want to get electrocuted. You have to come back down. You don't want to come down when it's dark. Exactly. It, it can be faster going down, that's true. But you don't want to come down when it's dark and don't want to come down in a lightning storm. And Oh, go on a day without a storm. That's true, Lita. That's true. Good, good point. All right, you guys. Okay, so finally what we're going to do then is we're just going to review a couple things that um, people tend to struggle with for our mid-unit quiz. Is everybody excited about that? Sure. Sure. Sure, I know you guys were. All right, so here is one of these simplifying problems. We're going to simplify. Yes. Dustin, you better say yes. I see you typing. You're going to simplify the expression by expanding and then combining like terms. So guys, remember PEMDAS? Sean, you got your PEMDAS down? Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys, PEMDAS. So first thing, multiplication. So you've got a 3 out here. You've got to distribute it into the parentheses. Multiply 3 times x. And then multiply 3 times 5. What is x that you're trying to figure out? Nope. And that's a good question, actually, Janae. On this one, we're not trying to figure out x. Because notice there's no equal sign in there. 
So, and we don't have anything to plug in for X. So all we're really doing is just simplifying it a little bit. Speechless. Um, we're just going to simplify. So all we're going to do, exactly, 3 times X is just 3X. And we're going to do 3 times 5, which is just 15. And we're not, we can't do the parentheses right now because we can't combine X and 5. Right, Shoshana? Different terms, different terms. Okay, so let's move on to the next parentheses. We do have a negative 2, which is going to go into the parentheses. So we're going to do negative 2 times our 4, and we're going to do negative 2 times negative x. So you guys be really careful with your negatives. Negative 2 times 4, negative 8. Negative 2 times negative x, positive 2x. And then I'm just going to do like I did before, and I'm going to write the rest of the problem down so that I don't have any steps skipped or anything like that. Okay, so now all I have left is addition and subtraction, and I'm just going to go from left to right. Okay, so the first thing I have is I have this 3x, right? So I have 3x. I can only combine that with other x's. Well, I can't combine it with the 15 or the negative 8, but I do have a 2x and another 2x. So I have 3x plus 2x plus 2x. What's that? Good job, everybody. Good job. Yes, very nice. 7x. Oh, you guys all did really well. Everyone, very nice. So 7x, um, and all those things that are underlined in green are now taken care of, right? You can either cross them off or you can... Underline them so you know you've done it. So let's keep moving left to right. So now we're on to 15. Well, I can combine that with any number. So I have 15 minus 8. What's 15 minus 8? That's uh, 7, I believe. 7? You guys seen 7? Mental math. A little mental math. So I've got 7. And then plus 6, what's that? 13. 13, yes, good, very good, you guys, 13, way to go. And that is the answer. So I didn't solve or do anything, I just simplified. Are you erasing it? Oh, you didn't subtract, yep. And that's, and that's, you know, and that is the biggest thing, you guys, just be really careful about signs, and that happens a lot, very common. Okay, so, and these are numbered just like your review. So that was in number one on your review. And then the next one is in number three on your review. And always people have trouble finding the rules to represent the perimeter. And the key thing, too, here is that this is saying perimeter. So you have to really read the problem. It's not saying to represent how many tiles there are. Oh, yeah, science can mess you up in math. I know it. And that's the hard thing about math is sometimes math is really easy, but then these signs add a lot of detail, and, it, and then, you know, it's kind of a bummer. Okay, so if we want to find a rule to represent the perimeter... Well, this is like the one that you did in your review. So one, two, so there's five sides on this first one, right? Am I counting that right? And then how many sides are on the second one? Yeah. Are there ten? Uh, are there nine? Yes. Two, four. Double check because it's eight. I think I think you're off one, Janine. That's okay though. You're close. All right. And so just to make sure, how many sides are on this figure three? Looks like I'm getting 11. Hopefully you guys are getting 11 too. So what are we growing by? Three. three. You're growing by three. Well, we just did these problems, right? That's our growth. That's our change. So what goes next to the X? Three. Very good. Okay, so the only thing I'm missing is, is a B. And I just need to figure out if I need a B. Well, the way you do it is you take... This is figure one, this is figure two, figure three. If I plug in figure one, I get three times one, and that should equal however many sides I have, right? Which is, I have five, five sides. Well, does three times one equal five? Ah, oh, very good, yay. No, good job, Lydia, yes. And Fiona said, I need to add two. Do you guys all agree with that, add two? Maze, yes. Shana, yes. Are you guys are yes? Lita's typing. What's in them? You're so quiet today. 
No, you don't agree? All right, well, Lita, what would... Oh, you're saying that no... I see what you're saying. No, they doesn't add up to 5. Yes, I see. So if we add 2, 3 times 1 plus 2, we should get 5. So we can test it with figure 2. So if we put a 2 in there, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2. Do we get 8? So we're going to, we're testing it with figure two. Okay. So we just want to make sure that our rule is good. So if we take figure two and we plug in a two, yeah, yeah it works. Three times two, six plus two, and we should get eight. Okay. So I hopefully I'm too tired. Oh, I'm sorry, Lita. I'm sorry. We're almost done actually. And then you guys can, then you guys can rest. You guys can take a nap. Not really, but you can sleep tonight. Probably be for real. Yeah, people from home probably can take a nap. That's true. You know, you can take a nap. Not yet. Don't take a nap yet. Okay, you guys. So, last one. Last one. Create expressions from tables. So, this is actually just like what we just did, only in some ways it's easier. And you can turn anything into a table if you want. So, let's do that. Okay. So, what's our change? What, what's our change here? Oh, nice job. Minus 3. And we can tell. We can look down and see we are minus 3 every time. Okay, so if we make our equation, we're going to have y equals negative 3 because it's minus 3. I'm going to make sure y is negative. So we just need one more number at the end. And so here's how we do it, right? Take the 1 for x and plug it in. What's negative 3 times 1? negative 3, but we need it to be 9. So what do we need to add to negative 3 to be 9? Positive 3. Okay, guys, I'm, so I'm going to write out the equation so you can see it. Ready? You get 9 equals, because we need it to be 9, negative 3 times 1. What do we need to add? To, well, we need it to be 9. <laughs> Uh, we've got some three. people online that are exactly correct. Yes. Lita, Serena. 12. 12. Guys, <laughs> just keep going up. 12 is correct because negative 3 plus 12 is 9. So we would just need to add plus 12 on the end. Yes. Yes. So, so do you think where you are, you're at negative 3? And to get all the way to 9, you've got to make up that negative 3 to get to 0, right? And then you've got to go another 9. So you've got to go that 3 plus the 9. Okay, you guys. Nice job. Very nice job. So are there any questions that I can give you answers to? Anybody have any questions? We just learned about, we just learned about what you said. I don't know if you're learning <laughs> You aren't. Like, I don't, I don't know what you said. Yeah. Is all of this really working? This is, we're working on like these are kind of things you're working on, but like Brad's working on. Uh huh. Okay. This is true. And so Janae's question is for her. It seems like a lot, and we'll get to you too, Kiana. But one thing um, you guys keep in mind is that those things were learned all over from weeks two through week four. So you actually, once you get through it all, it, it's not that quick. Um, it's not all in one week. It was spread over the weeks. So when you go back I'm just used to working on something, working on it for a long time, and then just going on something else. Oh, working yeah. On going through physics, so. Yeah, no, and that's true. And that's why you guys, really important, stay caught up, because within that one week, we tend to just kind of work on the same types of things. And then in the next week, we tend to review that a little bit and then add something kind of related. So you'll be fine once you go through the week. Okay. And then, Kiana, did you have a question, too? Um, Uh huh. Did they use like a whole number? Oh, you mean like um? So we're talking graphing. So the question is about a, a whole number. So say you have like y equals two. You mean like that? X plus one, something like that. Or or. Don't you say a whole number and then over? Like one over one over Um, so give me an example of an Here, equation. I'll show you. Seven. 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 Se
seven. Oh, seven times one over four? Here. All right, write it down. I mean. Okay, Janae is writing it down. Like Let's see. One, one whole. And then oh, no, 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 no. It, like that? Like one and one fourth? Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, a good question. So, so the question was, I'll just write it down so you guys can see. Would there ever be something where I'd give you like three and one half, like that? X plus something? Yeah. Maybe like that? So no, I won't ever write it like that. Um, you would never see it. But you guys, if you do get something like that, remember you can always do 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 and, get, and change it back to 7 halves if you want to. But I won't, I won't give it to you like that. I'll always give it to you as a fraction. Or you might just get 2, and then you guys, what number? Oh, I would give you, uh, yeah, that's true. I could give you 7 over 2. I'd give it to you like that, yeah. But I would never give it to you as 3 and 1 half. If I just gave you two, what's that over? One. Good. Yep, yeah, one. So if I just give you a number, it's the same thing as being over one. So you guys can still do rise over run. So you still can go up two over one, up two over one. Exactly. Very good question. Very good question. Any other questions from anybody? None at all? You guys are, you feel pretty good? Okay. All right. Oh, one more question. Um, what is it? Or did you say it's on this one? Do you want me to go back? You want to ask me later? Okay. All right, so Serena, you're good. Very nice. So all you guys that attended, I really appreciate that you attended. And um, like I said, make sure that you download the review and then check it with the answer key, which I put this week. And then when you're ready, feel free to take the exam <clears throat> that's waiting for you. And really, really, really try not to get behind because then it does get overwhelming with so much information that you have to learn all in, you know, a week or something like that. So, so um, you know, take it one week at a time. And, and also one other thing is check the comments because I put comments on all your work. Um, you know, occasionally I don't if you've done a really good job or I may put good job, but check your comments. You know, you guys have opportunities to resubmit and retry it again. So definitely don't forget about that. All right. I guess that concludes our session. Thanks to you guys very much and we'll see you all next week.